Um, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to do a little brief intro by letting these folks intro themselves. Um, and uh, just to give you uh, a quick who's here. Um, so to my immediate left, we have Hart Hardy uh, Tankersley. Is that my pronouncing <laughs> that right? That's close Tankersley? enough, yes. Uh, who's head of innovation, VP of innovation at Fox Broadcasting. Uh, to his left, or your right, um, we have Ankarino Lara, uh, founder and uh, CFO of The Moment, Inc. C C CPO, I'm sorry. It's hard to read this. Uh, and I'm going to let Ankarino introduce himself last, because he probably is going to need the most time to explain what he does, so you're, since you're probably least familiar with his company. Um, and to his left, is Matt Jacobson, head of marketing development at Facebook, who you probably know who that company is. Uh, and then to his left is Danielle De Palma, who's VP of New Media uh, at, at, uh, in theatrical marketing at Lionsgate. Uh, so, uh, Hardy, why don't we start with you uh, and just give a brief intro to what you're doing and what VP of Innovation yeah. means. Yeah, it's the best job in the world. Um, I don't have to do anything. Uh, uh, no, I, I get to play with all the fun stuff. So I, I do everything digital and online that's not uh, Fox.com. So um, the biggest piece of it is managing all the social media, all, all of our Facebook, Twitter, you know, MySpace, everything, uh, presence, syndication of content out to uh, all of the, as many sites on the internet as we can get to. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm a part, just to be clear, I'm a part of the, the broadcast network, so I sit on the network side and all week. Um, we're really just trying to get people to watch more television. Uh, so that's, that's the entertaining problem. Great, thank you. So why don't we skip all the way down there to you at the end, Danielle, okay. give us a quick one on the Lionsgate story. Sure, I, I oversee all of our online media for our theatrical marketing, as well as our website creative, social strategy, um, basically work within theatrical marketing to, to bring our campaign online. Great. Matt, you probably don't need a a huge amount to talk about Facebook, but tell us what you specifically do there. So I'm the head of market development at Facebook. I've been at the company for over five years now, so I've the, been blessed and lucky to be one of the first 10 employees there. And uh, I remember trying to get into conferences like this when people didn't know what we were talking about. But I work specifically with our either big categories that we're breaking, like financial services, entertainment categories, the first category for us, and I work with several of the studios here in town. Great. And Ankarina, we've saved the best to last. So, on, uh, what, what your company does first, and then what you do there. So uh, this moment started about two years ago, a little over two years ago, relatively new, and uh, we create a product called the Distributed Engagement Channel, which allows for a single login, a single interface uh, backend for brand managers online, for IP owners, to manage their digital presence across a variety of websites. So we focus on some of the big ones like Facebook and YouTube and MySpace in those brand channel environments, and it allows a single experience to be brought up in each of those environments, as well as on mobile. And then the brand manager can use that single login to control that experience. Great, thank you. I guess I should probably explain what I do. So I head up business development at CAA, and within that, uh, our, our digital efforts are housed. And that includes representing companies like Cisco and IMAX, and it also includes uh, doing startups that we have helped build or incubate, including Funny or Die, which some of you might be familiar with. Um, so let's start with social media. And I'm going to ask questions not for everybody to answer because someone told me that's really boring when you ask one question, everyone goes down the line and answers. So we'll mix it up and we'll keep it casual. And I'll, I'll try and direct um, questions to either one particular person and anybody else can join in to annotate that if you like. Uh, or I'll throw a question out there and whoever wants to grab it can grab it and we'll keep it, we'll it kind of loose. But Hardy, I'm going to start with you since you're closest to me. And, <laughs> You have that fancy title, VP of Innovation, yeah. which I really like. One day I want to get that, too. My mother's very proud. <laughs> so <laughs> since, you're, since you're used to the broad, undefined questions, um, here's the first question, which is, okay. how do you define social media in this context? What, what does it actually mean? How, how wide does it go? That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question, because it's, it's getting wider every day. right? We, we, we uh, probably start out defining it as, as uh, anything where people are contributing their own content. So, it, but it covers YouTube and Facebook and MySpace and, and Twitter. Um, but everybody's adding social features to their to their site to their content. So we're getting to this. Way, I'm sure you know, Facebook would agree that uh, we're getting to this social web where every site is becoming social, and it is becoming a difficult thing to figure out how to define you know, what is social and what isn't. It's kind of almost everything now. Mm -hmm. uh, even you know, with connected TVs and, 
and other kind of devices, even the TV is becoming social medium. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's a blurry definition. Did anybody want, the anybody want to add anything to the blurry definition? Matt, what about you? you you're the, one of the inventors of social media. What is it? How broad yeah, I, does it go? I think it doesn't, it's social media, I think, to, kind of on his point, it doesn't really mean anything anymore. I mean, I, there was a time when we were trying to describe what the business was, and it was always like something else. And I think that, you know, luckily now we're in a point where social media kind of spans everything from Flickr to Facebook and everything in between. And, and so we like to try to think that, you know, in a lot of ways, Facebook kind of stands alone. And these, these sites are all so different. I think we, we look for easy buckets to put the put this in a in category, and it doesn't really work that way anymore. Okay. We've taken more of a platform approach, for example, you know, to the way we work with partners than, than most other publishers. Danielle, why don't we get specific and talk about some properties or films that you're working on and how you've used social media to help them. What, what's an example of, of how you're using it and what does success look like when you do use it? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we develop social strategies for all of our films. I mean, I think to, to your guys' points, everything is social online now, so everything that we do incorporates any kind of social tools or you know, when we're pushing things out online, the idea is to help them spread. So everything that we are doing is, is social. Um, I think The Last Exorcism was a campaign we ran recently, as well as The Expendables. Both, I think, were, were good examples of um, innovative ideas within the social sphere. Um, for The Expendables, we ran a campaign with YouTube where it started out as a normal interview uh, session with Sylvester Stallone, and then mid-interview, you know, mid you know, the page starts exploding. You know, some of the other modules on the page started, you know, fighting back and forth with him. So it was kind of a, an interactive experience that I think was surprising to the person that was watching it. And it ended with Stallone then asking people to share from there. Mm -hmm. So I think it was kind of an innovative idea uh, or an innovative approach on what would be a simple interview uh, normally. And then it spread from there. It was really cool having uh, Sylvester Stallone be a part of it. And uh, having him tell people to share was definitely a call to action. <laughs> and how, do you, how do you juice the entire kind of um, viral when things go viral, how do you juice that? When you, how do you identify it and how do you juice it? When you see it happening, how do you kind of accelerate it? I mean, I think that both The Last Exorcism and uh, The Expendables were just great examples of great content and kind of giving people something compelling to look on, to watch online and then kind of the discovery of that. I think everybody and what really works in social media is having, first of all, you know, great content and second of all, it's allowing people to feel like they've discovered and shared something. Mm -hmm. So I think for us, it was really just making sure that all the blogs were picking up on it and that we were promoting it within you know, our own social media pages right. and, and pushing it from there. And Matt, what advice would you give to Hardy uh, or Danielle in terms of, you know, you're, you're doing a lot with kind of media companies and how they're approaching Facebook. What advice would you give them as to how to optimize the experience? I think, you know, and Danielle, and we work very closely with Danielle and the whole team at Lionsgate, and I think that as one of the studios that really leaned into, into Facebook in a meaningful way, Lionsgate's really been there. I think it's been fantastic. But I think what's made those things work and the experience you described, you know, it sounds it's a YouTube experience, is different than the way people engage on Facebook. This idea of, you know, creating brand advocates or, you know, having people who are fans of what you're doing and use them in a way to promote what you're doing online and share in a meaningful way. The connection that people have on Facebook, the average is about 127 connections for each Facebook user. Yeah. And to share that idea of something that you like, become an expert, you know, kind of for your taste in movies or cars or you know, TV shows is, is pretty meaningful on Facebook. I think where, you know, and it, was, it was interesting watching the, the piece before, and that was very clever stuff, but all of that was around, well, here's all the stuff you can do, it's, it's viral, it's going to happen kind of for free. And I think those days are over to a great extent. I think that, you know, kind of really good, smart, you know, use of media and use of programmatic elements and things that people are sharing on the platform is really the best way to get, uh, to be successful. I think Fox is you know, had great success on our platform, as most of the networks have as well. So I think you just kind of get in front of the traffic. The traffic is, you know, connecting and sharing stuff with people that matter to them the most. And as long as you give them something to do with a meaningful call to action, that's what works. Great. So Hardy, you deal mostly in TV, I assume, Fox Broadcasting. So I imagine uh, a TV property is going to differ from a film property from a social media perspective. What, what are those differences, and how do you, again, use the platforms to, uh, 
to help create more buzz around TV properties. Interesting. I think the, the biggest difference that just occurred to me um, relates to, to social media and not as well is there, there used to be a philosophy of you try to get everybody to come to your site. You know, because we, we have a business on Fox.com. You know, we have an advertising business. We, we put episodes. We, we want traffic. Uh, so there's a resistance to putting content everywhere because then you know we, we need some exclusivity to drive. We also work with uh, big media partners on a kind of publicity basis, which I'm sure you do too, where you'll give an exclusive clip to a partner who has a lot of traffic like Yahoo or somebody uh, to try to, to build traffic around that. So we're always trying to balance building traffic to a destination against getting our you know, content in front of everywhere because that's that's the most important thing. And, and there's certainly no, it's, it's an art, not a science. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're guessing all the time. I mean, we had a huge viral blow up this week that we did not see coming. We did the, the Simpsons um, opening uh, created by Banksy, which was a big viral phenomenon. And uh, you know, it kind of caught us by surprise. Like We didn't create it. <laughs> it, just, yeah. it just happened by itself. Uh, so we're trying, OK, now. But we, we try to create them all the time. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. You know, there, there, there's no good formula. So, fam oh, sorry. this is one of the underlying philosophies of this moment as a company is that, to uh, Matt's point from before, is everything is social now and everything has to be shared and everything by definition is part of your, your network. Um, at the Hardy's point, it's not about distracting that fan or that user from what they're doing right now to go to this micro site or go to this other place and engage with this thing over there. So at this moment, what we built is this channel which lives natively within Facebook. It lives within YouTube and on MySpace and wherever else. And so the fan, it's, the fan him or herself is not penalized by where they happen to encounter the brand. The brand stays at the center regardless of which instance they happen to be on. And they're all interconnected. So if I'm uploading something cool to a Fox experience on MySpace, I see that real time on YouTube. I can share that on Facebook, and that goes out as well. So it becomes one ecosystem. So you hopefully can capture those viral nuggets before they hit without trying to have to you know, set your nets up at fox.com only and try to you know, grab them there. And, that, and that's where you, one of the big movements on Facebook this, you know, kind of the next year will be the decoupling of Facebook from facebook.com. <clears throat> you see you know, those of you who log in, whether it's Yelp or City Search or the half a million other sites that are using Facebook login as their universal login or any of our other social plugins, we're driving you know, we don't need to drive a lot of traffic back to Facebook because we have a, a lot of traffic there. But it's more important for us to, to be able to take, you know, the whole concept behind this is that sharing, an open and connected world where people are sharing stuff is a better one. And the fact that you have your persona, you know, on Facebook and can take that with you around the web is really meaningful. So, you know, we, we I think the, the difference between kind of us and uh, Fox.com is that, you know, we believe this stuff should be disaggregated. You know, you're the experience should be disaggregated from the website, and we can be an enabler for that. And we think of ourselves as a media platform, as a technology platform, not as a media company at all. Um, and Karina, going back to you for a minute, and, and maybe you could explain more about your company, because I'm sure it's, it's new for most people here. But give us some thoughts on how to maximize uh, the ROI for, for folks uh, with respect to their social media campaigns and what tools that you might have or other tools in the marketplace that they could be using to help them um, monitor and maximize? So we spent a lot of time on the web, 15 years, better part of 15 years, at various companies, CNET networks, at Yahoo, and always building these uh, user engagement experiences around, in those places, vertical. So GameSpot or TV.com or the Yahoo Entertainment properties. And it was honing in on what was the low, what is the lowest common denominator for users' interactions in terms of sharing and interacting with your content. Trying to focus on nailing that as a foundation and then going up from there, customizing where it makes sense for your brand or for the, for the market segment. Um, so we have a number of tenets which is, are about just being as simple as possible. And um, so we have a core set of modules, if you will, the way the page is structured to allow people to engage with content, to see things, to uh, upload content or to engage with UGC uh, broadly, and then as well to share. We have a series of real-time reporting decks that you can view, again, via this uh, single backend to see in real time what's working. So mm -hmm. I'm putting up new trailers, I'm putting up new photos, I'm putting up behind the scenes information. Uh, I have a UGC call to action. We actually did a great one with Danielle on Kickass, one of our first clients, thank you, for <laughs> believing in us back in February, um, around people sharing their kickass moves like uh, Kickass does in the movies. Uh, no prize involved, no incentive beyond just like being cool to your friends. 
and found different ways of tweaking that real time to get the most out of people as they came to the sites. Um, so it's a combination of things, it's a long answer, it's a long way of saying you got to start simple and then build from that as you go forward based on what your, real, your brand call is. Great. Um, let's talk some more about some case studies. So kick is a great version. Hardy, on, on Family Guy, you have about, what, 20 million? Almost 20. 20 yeah. million, almost Probably 20 million. 20 maybe, maybe by yeah. this morning, 20. That's amazing. <laughs> so kind of take us through <laughs> the evolution thing. of that, kind of where. It should be the biggest show on television. Really? <laughs> uh, uh, so you know, where did you start? How'd you go about that? How'd you amass that many? Um, where does it go from here? Yeah, uh, uh, so it's interesting because it's a property that's been around for a long time. Uh, it was created, uh, fan sites were created on Facebook long before I think Fox even knew what Facebook was. So we, we've been able to aggregate a lot of the pre-existing fan traffic and sites and kind of pull them together into a, into a single property. But um, Family Guy's Insane House is over 15 million. Uh, Simpsons is about 10. Glee's about 8. And we're really a huge yeah. numbers you know, uh, uh, for these, these shows. And, and to have this direct connection to those, those fans is, is incredibly powerful. <coughs> um, and some of those we've built, and some of them ha have just happened. I mean, Glee, we, we invested in from the beginning. We really tried to build a, a big social media presence for Glee because it was a perfect fit for the property. Uh, we've got all the characters on Glee have their own Facebook pages, and they, they post quite a bit uh, to each other. Um, we put a lot of content into those streams, and I think that's the biggest thing that, that we're trying to learn from, is how to uh, enrich those, those uh, audiences through strategic deployment of content into that world um, and watch what people respond to. I think another point I wanted to make is it's, it's become such a real-time world, mm -hmm. and I think this fits what you guys are doing. Um, <clears throat> that you really have to watch and see and react quickly. So you know, in an afternoon, if you see some uh, some message breaking, or you see some way that the audience is interpreting uh, what you're doing, you have to be able to react to it and, and give them more, or give them less, you know, tune things. So we're, we're trying to put a lot of systems in place now to watch it hour by hour exactly what, what those fans are into today right. and how can we give them more of it and, and amplify it. And I imagine being TV series, again, versus movies, there's more access to a steady stream and real-time stuff. And yeah, absolutely. And, and, it, and it goes on, uh, you know, it goes on for years. Yeah, right. It is a bit of a double-edged sword, though, too. I mean, all that real-time access that we, we have, one of the features we offer is a way to conflate all of your broadcast streams, all of your official, um, you know, whether it's Facebook accounts or Twitter accounts, the characters of Family Guy, uh, the characters of Glee talking to each other. That's all happening in the, that sphere. And then there's also just able, ways to just dip that ladle into the rushing river of the web and pull up, you know, give me all the tweets that have Family Guy mm -hmm. in them. And there's a lot of crazy stuff that you'll get when you do that yes. if you don't screen it. So we offer a lot of power, but also at the same time have to help educate brands who are more conservative. Um, we did something with you guys recently with Toyota. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of people saying a lot of bad things about Toyota right now out there. And you have to be really careful about what you wish for when you say, I want real-time connection. So we try to help you know, let people baby step into that and have certain profanity filters and moderation techniques in place. Danielle, let's talk about Tyler Perry. Yeah, I mean, Tyler Perry has a tremendous audience online. I mean, we started a Facebook page, I believe, for um, why did I get married, or one of the films before that, and have just carried on these fans. We have uh, For Colored Girls coming out in November, and I think we're close to 800,000 fans right now. And it's just, it's an incredible audience. I feel like everybody's very engaged. It's all about creating conversation with them. Um, you know, continuing to have that conversation. I think a lot of times people will put up a Facebook page or start these social surfaces and then kind of just let them be. But I think it's really important in strategy to continue to, to talk to them and to understand and to hear what they're saying and to respond back to them. So we definitely make sure that that's what we're doing for all of our campaigns. Danielle, can you give us an example of, here's a property I wouldn't use social media for. And you don't have to use a Lionsgate. You could pick another studio if you want. But I'd love to hear if there's something you wouldn't use this for. I mean, I think social media is important for everything, really. I mean, I think that there are certain films that benefit from it most or that will have the largest audience. I think Kick-Ass and um, Saw are great examples, and Tyler Perry, of an audience that you can continue to engage with. Um, you know, I think anything that's edgy or that has a fan base already built in uh, really works well for social media, but I think everything is social. And how do you think about the, the, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry Michael, but I think you need, to, you need to think of this as kind of an awareness and intent tool. I mean, at the end of the day, what's the ROI on this? I mean, aggregating fans is one metric, and engagement is a great metric, and tools that allow people to do that in a meaningful way are great. I think the next, 
you know, rev of this, and Lionsgate is good at it, Sony is particularly good at it, is how is measuring awareness, you know, building awareness with our ad products you know, and pages you know, six week out, and then making sure that you're fulfilling on that with intent week of. And I think that's, those are the magic beans for us, right? So the a large number of fans, high engagement rates, those are really good. You know, but in, in isolation, separated from building awareness and intent, you know, it's, it, it just feels cathartic to do it, but we really need to show that it's paying off. And luckily, we're, we're seeing it pay off. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on the Twitter promoted accounts? Anybody, we've talked a lot about Facebook. What about Twitter and, and how, how that works? Anybody want to throw out some ideas there? Yes, I haven't tried it yet. We're, we're looking at it. Uh-huh. Um, it's, it's it, it, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know. I think it's a good idea. We we definitely and also within the Facebook environment, sometimes you you have to buy in to get people to know you're there. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are certainly cases where you need to do that to to build a property from the ground up. Yeah, I mean, it's a new mechanism for broadcasting, and people are interested, for better or for worse, on what the official opinion is coming from an official brand source, and so. I think it's great. We, we integrate that as well mm -hmm. into our platform. And I mean, people who are fans want to know as much as possible about that thing that they're into, no matter what it is. Like Danielle was saying, it doesn't matter what, I don't think personally what film it is or even product. It, if you want to have people purchasing it or accessing that service, you need to have that awareness. And a lot of it comes from online today, as we know, more and more every day. On our end, we we're working very closely with Twitter to understand it and to understand what does have the best ROI. I think for us, you know, we, we manage certain pages for all of our films and, you know, continue a dialogue there and, and promoting um, different materials for the film. But I think when it comes to what we're doing on the promoted account side, I think that I think everybody's still trying to, to figure it out exactly. I also think that, that you have to be sensitive to the different platforms have different behaviors. We see very different activity on Twitter than we do on Facebook, mm -hmm. than we do on MySpace, than we do on Tumblr, you know, whatever else. Uh, so you have to be a little bit context sensitive. You, 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 it, it, you can't just take the same campaign and kind of blast it out right. to the world and assume everybody's going to consume it in the same way. Also, with apologies to you, Matt, for talking about other non-Facebook uh, companies, but are there other, other non-Facebook, non-Twitter companies that are really relevant in social media for you guys? Is High Five relevant? Is Friendster relevant? Are there things that are relevant from an international perspective that might not be as relevant domestically? Where are you guys seeing, uh, you know, feel free to jump in. Uh, yeah, so we, there's a lot out there that we find relevant. Um, we have a global platform that allows brand managers at the regional level to localize and update their distributed engagement channel in their languages and with their promotions. And so whether it's working with Orkut or High Five or some of the Asian social networks, um, it's about create, building that experience and then putting it again to wherever the audience already is. Uh, and they're all over the place around the world, mm -hmm. although the lion's share of them are, of course, on Facebook, and we work in that environment very well. Um, we also look at Foursquare and other check-in style um, applications. Facebook has a great one. Google has a few. Um, and then any new things that come to the forefront that a client's really interested in trying, we're, we're game. Uh, Location-based, like capture the flag-esque uh, type of deals, GPS deals are really popular now, and so we're looking at some companies there trying to integrate with their APIs. And do you focus on one versus another because it's the demo's different or because you're going for comedy or because you're going for something that appeals more to the Asian marketplaces? Or are you making distinctions like that or is it much more broad or scattershot and just see where things land? We make a best recommendation to the client and the client tells us what they'd like to do and then we do that. Okay, but you do see differences <laughs> then. We do. So tell us, tell us a little bit more about the differences that you see. Um, well, you know, the, a lot of the foreign social networks are very closed environments. So whereas Facebook has a very robust, open public API system, uh, others don't. So, for example, in Orkut, where we're working currently with a launch this week, um, you can't really get anything out of the system. So you have to be really creative as to what types of ways you integrate. And it's basically like you know, at the login level and pretty much nothing else. But trying to deliver a very fun, custom, localized experience for those people is challenging sometimes when you just don't have that access. And I'm sure it'll follow over time, but right now, um, you know, a lot of the rest of the international groups are a lot behind the U.S. Mm -hmm. companies in that regard. Okay, Matt, let's go back to Facebook. We're tired of these other companies now. Well, I, mean, for, I mean, the one thing is, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not realistic. for We believe that sharing and connecting is a really important thing. 
we don't believe that's only going to happen on Facebook. I mean, all these things are important, you know, and, and I think they're, they're, Twitter is a different business than Facebook is a different business from MySpace. I don't think that we're all, there's, it's not binary, right? I yeah. think you need to kind of use all of these tools in a really meaningful way, which our open platform has been that we can take Twitter feeds and we can take feeds from other networks too. So I'm sorry, Michael. I was just going to ask you how I get some employee stock from Facebook. <laughs> I, it's, it's, there's, there. there's no vault of, there's no vault of grace Secondary in there anymore. Right? So. <laughs> uh, now I have a question for you. Um, so there's, there's a new program I think Facebook's instituted called uh, Instant Personalization. They've done this with Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if you guys heard. We've tested it on a couple of sites. Yeah, yeah, so we're, we're doing it with Pandora, we're doing yeah. it with Yelp, and I think we're doing it with Rotten Tomatoes. And it's, it's very much in a test phase. And the idea being right now, we talked a little bit about Facebook universal login, that's been widely accepted and, and you know, when you think about the other companies who have tried to do universal login, Microsoft has tried, Google has tried, Yahoo mm -hmm. has tried, and I don't think we've done anything so whiz bang with it. I think it's, this whole idea of, t of going places with your friends just makes it better. Same thing with photos. I mean, our photo product is not as good a photo product as most of the photo products that are out there. You can't take red eye out, you can't print a high res image. We have a billion photos being uploaded a month because you can tag your friends in them. And so, I think, you know, I believe that things like instant personalization and universal logins, you know, are really important things because they enhance the experience. You know, if, you, if you're looking at Yelp or you're looking at a review on Rotten Tomatoes, you know, Yelp tends to have, you know, it's a lot of college students, so everything is always too expensive, right? No matter what Yelp review you read, right? So when you start, you know, when you're old like me and you start reading Yelp reviews from people you know, it's a lot more meaningful. And mm -hmm. I think that, that kind of an experience, whether it is Yelp or whether it's uh, City Search or Rotten Tomatoes or Pandora, are greatly enhanced by you know by being logged in. Mm -hmm. Great. So I'm going to ask you a this is a general question anybody can answer. I bet you there's a few people out in the audience who are independent filmmakers, and I bet you they're thinking, "Gee, I don't know if I really need a <coughs> studio anymore. Maybe I could self-market my movie if I spent five hundred thousand bucks making a movie. Not too much money." I could probably self-distribute it and self-market it. I could use social media to kind of get the word out. You know, maybe that's another way to do this. I don't have to deal with studios anymore. So what do you guys think of that idea? Is that possible? Is it likely? Is it unlikely? What, what's your thought? It's like that line in The Player where, you know, the, where Larry Levy, the studio head, said, we just don't have to deal with writers anymore. You know, it would be <laughs> great too, right? But I mean, I think that that's, you know, that's somewhat of a fantasy. I mean, we work with... You know, we've done a lot of work, and Danielle has been involved in our stuff we've done at Sundance. We're particularly interested in independent film. I, I'm, you know, I made independent film before I joined Facebook, and you know, it's a the film world is a very entrepreneurial place right now. And if you're not doing the work, you know, I think there's there were films, you know, studio films last weekend where you had producers that were online, you know, stoking the Facebook status updates. You know, actors in the movie, you know, you know, stoking their Twitter feeds. I think that's part of that's the nature where the business is right now. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that you know we're we're going to be a substitute platform for the distribution of film. I mean I don't believe that. I mean going watching a film at the ArcLight in a big meaningful way, whatever that film is, you know, is a lot different than kind of watching it you know on your on your well, laptop. Let's, not, or your let's assume it's not, we're not for distributing; it's just for marketing it because a lot of what the studios do is market. Film. I, I think you know I, I I see a lot of forward you know and and I think you know the the management team Danielle's colleagues at Lionsgate. You know, these are, this is their money, this is the producer's money, this is the talent's money. I think there's a lot more scrutiny around you know, whether you really need that double truck ad in the Kansas City Star or that you know, billboard you know, in Connecticut rather than spending that money where I know I'm going to get return either in building awareness or an intent to go see the film. So I, I, you know, it's part of the whole pie. I think it's, just, it's, a, it's a lot more relevant than a lot of other stuff that people have been buying. Else it depends on what your metric of success is. Mm -hmm. you know, if, you, if you want to have a big mainstream hit, you know, nobody's ever done it. You know, the, 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 there's a lot of people who try it. Yeah. So uh, I kind of feel like if it was going to work, it should have worked by now. <laughs> um, and it hasn't happened. You've got to have some combination of there still is such a thing as mass media marketing. And you can't, I, I have not seen anyone be able to create a hit without it. You know, you, you, there are a few outside cases of growing little hits into big things you know, that kind of came from nowhere, but they're definitely the outliers. The odds definitely seem stacked against you. The, the bigger, the bigger question is how do you, you know, we, we kind of operate at scale, right? You know, 130 million people in the US, you can hit 60 million people in any given day because about half of our users log on in a day in the US. You know, 
So we're, we're operating at scale. Right, but it's, what does it cost to hit 60 million people on, on Facebook today? Less than it is to buy American Idol. So, but, you know, <laughs> the, But still more than your average indie filmmaker can afford. Well, yeah, for a film standpoint, yes. I mean, I think that's not, I mean, the film thing is, I mean, that's a bogey, right? I don't know if that's going to happen. But I think the, the goal, the collective goal of all of us are to find, you know, whether it's on the, the marketer's side or as partnering with marketers, is how do we open up a new channel that's really viable you know, when everything's becoming, you know, when there's a lot of choices and, you know, everything's, you know, people are skipping commercials and people are doing everything that's disruptive to that experience, how do we create a digital place, whether working with your tools on our platform, to create an alternative? You know, and then if we can level the playing field that way and then kind of let, you know, I don't think it's binary, I don't think it's broadcast or, you know, Facebook, I don't think it's print or Facebook or outdoor or Facebook, is how do we become a really meaningful part of that? Okay, so I just got to notice that, did you have something to say? No, I, I mean, Danielle? the only note I had was, I think that we're definitely a lot more strategic than I think that many, you know, filmmakers may be uh, aware of, and I think that we don't, you know, you can't really just put something out online uh, without being strategic. I mean, mm -hmm. we release certain clips, or we release certain things to tell a story, and I think that everything that we do is premeditated, so a lot of times I think people just think, you know, broad exposure is, is really important, but I think it's more important to be strategic with what you're releasing and when. Okay. Well, from I, our perspective, I mean, we're trying to create a business, so we have to charge for our services. But over time, the goal is to bring those down so that it's much more templated, so that people can come in at a lower price point and actually have a good social experience that can then be leveraged across these different platforms, YouTube, MySpace, Facebook, et cetera. Um, but ultimately, we haven't really had an indie film a customer or client yet. Uh, it's really been about the larger studios to date. I hope that that can change, but right now it's just uh, cost prohibitive. Maybe I'll get a few uh, pioneers in the audience will try this. So um, speaking of the audience, I think it's uh, five or ten minutes left here. I'd like to open it up for some questions from you folks. And if you have a question, please, if you can direct it to one of the speakers or to all of them, whatever you like. I promised you wouldn't do that. <laughs> Well, we we have we've lulled them to sleep. <laughs> we have no, no questions. <laughs> wow, we can just keep talking. Though. Yeah, brave you guys souls. Are, there, well, so there are no say. independent filmmakers in the audience, huh? I have a question. Ah. Um, to Darnell, what percent of the PNA budget actually okay. goes to <laughs> what you do in the social networking? I, mean, I think it's, it's different for every film. Um, I think there's a lot of different facets to online marketing. So there's media, you know, there's agencies you work with. So. It's, um, it's more than just kind of one cost, and I think it definitely depends on the film. Any other? But then, uh, is it increasing? I mean, what, obviously it must be increasing now. Yeah, I mean, I think that what we're doing online is becoming you know, more and more important, and I think that you know, can reach more eyeballs, and I definitely think there's more money going towards that. Where mm -hmm. it's coming from, I think, is we're a little bit scattered right now. Do you see a day where it will tip in favor of social media versus traditional? Or no, I mean, way? obviously TV is still, I mean, the, mm -hmm. the big eyeballs, and that's what People pushes. still watch TV, huh? <laughs> it's still, I mean, it's still the most important thing for awareness, um, but I think that what we're doing online, and it's not really just media, I think it's also creating, you know, compelling content for online and pushing yeah. it out that way is also important, so. Yeah. Any other questions? Should I keep riffing? Yes, in the front. Yeah, Dan, you know, I see there's a lot of, in Saw, I see you have a lot of stuff on buses, too. Yeah, the outdoor campaign is in yeah, full effect. Mm -hmm. And that's what's exciting, too, is also kind of converging all medias together. And I think what's exciting right now is being able to use different media platforms together. So with outdoor, um, for example, for Colored Girls, we have a campaign that we're doing right now where you can text or scan from the outdoor, and it takes you to some exclusive images on mobile. So it's definitely a fun time to, to be working in media and converging those platforms. We have another question in the front here. So talking about outdoor, should the, should the comparison for social media be against outdoor rather than against TV? I mean, what, what should no, be I think that they're two very different things. I mean, I think that, like I was saying, it's, it's strategic what we, what we do in marketing, and I think you need all platforms depending on the film. Um, but it is great when we have it all working together. But I definitely wouldn't substitute one for the other. Any other questions? Someone over here? Hello. Uh, question. You said before there was no example for a movie that was wide released uh, that did it pretty much focus on online. 
What about paranormal activity that, to my knowledge, didn't use any TV and still succeeded with over $100 million? Right, I'll, and, I'll give you a paranormal and I'll give you like Blair Witch. Yeah, but paranormal, paranormal, you know, viral. why was paranormal paranormal? Yeah. It's, it's obviously not your average business model, but it's not that it was a great film. It was innovative and people talked about it. Why could that not be achieved with other films without television? Uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I think there are, there are a few statistical outliers, and I think those are two of them. Um, I, I'm not sure you could repeat the, uh, the marketing experience of paranormal activity and do it again. I don't know. I'm sure you, you've tried, right? Yeah. <laughs> one every 10 years. But it's yeah, all, one, it's every a, ten, one every decade. It's, can, it's, it's, it's baby steps, too. I mean, now we're starting to see, you know, I think this will be the first year that you see studios not building standalone web pages for some of their titles. They'll be, it'll be Facebook slash. You're seeing that now with Toyota and Volkswagen and you know, Target and Kohl's. I think you'll see that now with Facebook slash some female romantic comedy where there really is no reason to have an expensive, dedicated and, and, website. You know, so from there, if we can, it's, it, the onus is on us. I mean, we've got to prove that there is real value in doing that, that you're getting people to go see that movie you know, on opening weekend. Yeah, and uh, like I said, I think it started that with, it depends on what your business objectives are. If you're, uh, we have these businesses, the big studios and the broadcast networks are very dependent on massive mainstream hits and an unending supply of them. And so you can't take those kind of chances all the time. You've got to have a, a system which can keep building, building bigger stuff all the time. And there are some challenges inherent in, in the Facebook system, too. A challenge, I guess, for you guys would be that now everything can be liked or you can be a fan of anything. Um, but to a lot of studios and different IP owners, having the individual, um, say, film names or character names be liked versus the overall suite of films. I know it's a challenge that you face sometimes, Danielle, on Lionsgate Live versus the actual independent, the actual uh, unique film, is how do you collect a bunch of followers or friends or likers or whatever the subscribers on YouTube, whatever that group is called, that rolls up to your brand and can move along with you over time as you continue along that path over the internet versus just having these little fragmented sort of balkanized flashpoints of likes. That's a challenge for all of us on the web. Yeah, that's another big difference between TV and film, mm -hmm. I think, as well. We're, we're trying to leverage every day people watching one show into watching something else. P people who want, you know, watching Glee, please watch Raising Hope. Mm -hmm. um, and, and films, like, you've got to start it all over every time. I mean, it's really, it's building a brand in, you know, four to six weeks sometimes with media. Yeah. So, and for us, it's really interesting it's because crazy. we also put out so many different types of film, whether it's Tyler Perry or The Horror we Saw. Um, you know, we're working on a film, Rabbit Hole, which is coming out in December, and all so different and so many mm. different types of campaigns. So it is hard to leverage, you know, the same fan page for each one of these films just because the audience is so different. There's a question in the middle of the room there. So I just inherited all this money, and I'm looking at all you executives up there, and I want to fund some new companies. <laughs> so I'm looking at the four or the five of you to leave your corporate uh, net of safety and uh, start a business that's your dream business that you know will be successful. And I have as much money for you as you need. So would you mind all telling me uh, on our first date what company you would start? Is that Carl? Is Thank that you is so you? much. Who is that? Is that Carl? It is. I knew it was you. Isn't that a different conference? You, Who's Carl? <laughs> um, Carl? Oh, you better introduce yourself now. I don't know, but he's rich. So yeah. a lot of money. Good to know That's all him. you need to know. Well, this, mo this right, moment is uh, taking live investments. Right, got, um, I, I, I did start my dream company two years ago, so I'm happy to talk with you about that. <laughs> um, yeah, don't start a media company. Say <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's hard. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, all right, so the, 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 my current obsession, and I don't know how you make any money at it, but my current obsession is with check-in services. You know, there, there's already, at least I think I'm working with six, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's an interesting idea, you know, and if Facebook's going to build this in maybe, um, you know, an interesting idea of creating that social environment around watching TV, going to movies, media consumption. I think there's something there uh, to be done. I think, you know, your friend's advice is, is probably the most important factor in what you choose to consume. And people are starting to create very interesting uh, tools around social integration of that, plus the whole social gaming thing kind of glued into everything else. Is that a feature or a company? Interesting. 
Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, you know if <laughs> I, I did, I'd be out there doing it. I think I, the, the great thing is, and in, 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 in what's happening in this economy right now, in the digital economy, is that if it's expensive and hard to do, then you're doing something wrong. Because the tools are generally free. I mean, the reason why you're seeing Facebook slash you know, whatever the company is, because it's scalable, it's high def video, it's pictures, it's access to you know, fan information and their friends, and it's free. And so the, I think there's a lot of value to be created in leveraging really good ways to use those existing tools, mm -hmm. whether it's a services business or it's a, an application that lives on top of it. And I think that's what's so exciting right now. You don't, you don't, a lot of the great startups that are happening now, you know, when we've made some acquisitions are to get great teams of people, and the teams are three people, right? It's not anymore I've got to raise you know, X to hire you know, you know, X plus 100. It's now finding, okay, what's that good idea? How can I add value to something that's already happening? Our API for places is an open one. So whether it's Gowalla or Foursquare, whoever is building a check-in service, you know, we're happy for them to build it on top of our platform. We don't take any vig on, on the use of our platform tools. Well, I think we're almost out of time. One more question here. Mm -hmm. Your name is Mr. Fox. It is now. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Like, uh, <laughs> Fabulous. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, do you have a brand like American Idol or House? I think it's the number one show. I mean, do you really need to venture and do the use of Facebook or tweet, Twitter? I mean, you're famous, Mr. Fox. Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, it comes to us, right? It's easy. Um, well, the thing, the thing is, uh, the thing about the network is the, these things aren't going to be the biggest show on television forever. You know, at, at some point, we will need another one. So, so what we're really trying to do is is uh, figure out how to create more hits off of the, the ones that we've got, build that audience. Um, but also you have to keep the brand vital and alive and people, the audience expects it to be there. And we had a lot of fights about this two years ago really when we started really digging into this in earnest about people saying, you know, why, why can't we just pull those people to fox.com or americanidol.com, right? They're our fans, you know, they're not Facebook's fans. Um, and we had a lot of argument about it but I think we've, we've the open model has won out where we said we have to, the, so the fans expect you to be there and if you're not there, they'll do it themselves. You know, and this happens all the time. People create fan sites and crazy things are going on and we have to come in and like, you know, everybody out of the pool, um, <laughs> try to control the brand. But the, the, if, if, you, if you have a popular property, people are gonna take off with it and I think it's important for us to participate in that conversation and not try to be above it and, and trying to tell people how they're supposed to enjoy our product. And to that point, um, there's so many of your products have such a rabid fan base that they're contributing to the yeah. evolution of the show as it goes. I don't know if that's true of House, but you know, to, certainly a lot of serial programs took nods from their communities, Lost is a famous one from ABC, and diverted the storylines to appease the fans as the fans' you know, attention waned and waxed. So I think it's really important over the lifetime of something that will go on for many, many years, like Fox and Fam or Family Guy and House have. Okay, well, I think we're at the end of our show. Danielle, Matt, and Carino, Hardy, thank you very much, and thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.